Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. In this video, we're gonna have a first look at a new feature that allows you to schedule a Microsoft Teams meeting and invite a group or a distribution list. This means that you'll no longer have to type in the individual names into the required attendees line when creating a new Teams meeting. It's a feature often asked for and discussed in the comments section on this very channel. I had a first look and although it's a good start, there are a few key features missing and I'll tell you about that later. Before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon because we're posting every week and we don't want you to miss anything. First of all, I should explain what I mean by groups and lists. By group, I mean a modern Microsoft 365 group. This is the group that controls access to Teams and SharePoint sites. And by lists, I mean traditional email or distribution lists that have always been a part of the Microsoft email system known as Exchange. These can be seen in your Outlook client, but until now have not been available in Teams. Classic security groups that control permissions can't be invited to Teams meetings. I also tested with an email enabled security group just to be sure and that didn't work either. To start with, let me give you a few examples of how you might use this. To add a group or list to a Teams meeting, you go to the calendar app and choose new meeting. So give your meeting a title and then go to the add required attendees field. When you type into this field, it will suggest people and groups and lists. For example, I have an email list called all employees. If I start typing that, it will suggest it below and I can add it to the required attendees list. I can also add a mix of groups, lists and people to that line. So if I remove all employees and type retail, executives and an individual, I've got one here called Patty, it lets me do that. There are a few limitations here. Something that is still missing is the ability to open up an address list and pick from the list like we can in Outlook. You need to know the name of the list or group in order to add it to the meeting. Once you start to type the name, Teams will make a suggestion, but being able to pick it from a list is sometimes really useful. Also, there's no way of telling whether a suggestion is a group or a list. If you start typing the name and you have two entries that look similar, there's no way of telling which one is which. If I type sales here, I've got a group called sales and marketing and a list called sales team. And I've got no way of telling which is the list and which is the group. And for some reason, it doesn't bring the group icons through here because the sales and marketing group should have an icon. That isn't the case in Outlook. If I switch over to Outlook, you'll see I can create a new Teams meeting. And if I click on the required button, I can bring up the address list and I can see all my groups and lists. The lists are in bold, so it's obvious which are groups and which are lists. If I type sales here, for example, you can see that. And if I choose sales and marketing, I can see the icons for that group. So Outlook is your friend if any of those restrictions are causing you problems. So back in Teams, I'm gonna address my meeting to the all employees distribution list, and I'm gonna call the meeting company meeting. If I go to the scheduling assistant page now, I can see the all employees list here, but I can't expand the list, so I can't see individual availability. You can do that in Outlook. If I create a Teams meeting and address it to the all employees list, and then go to the scheduling assistant, I can expand the list here and I can see individual availability. Finally, back to Teams. And when I'm happy that all the details are done and ready, I can press send and that will email the invitation to all the people in the all employees list. When individuals accept the invitation, they'll appear in the optional list in the tracking section of that meeting on the details page. So I can clearly see who's accepted my invitation. Megan has accepted the meeting request and she's listed here under optional. Okay, so that's your first look at inviting groups and lists to Teams meetings. I'd like to hear your experiences, so let us know and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.